Growing up as a skinny fat kid, I had it rough. I never had enough muscle to look good and also had no definition because of the fat I was carrying. Started doing some push-ups at home to get some arms and chest, not just for summer but in general, but it didn't lead to satisfaction. Had one of the worst diets I have seen online where the main goal was to avoid bread, the thing I had for everything, even to my soups. And I yo-yoed back to the starting point. But over the years I managed to find a sustainable way to maintain a lean, muscular physique and you can do the same. If you follow these steps. And you are probably thinking the top 10% physique is not achievable. Well it is. Just walk down your street, shops and look around. The average people, they don't look good. Now how many of these go to the gym? Way less than 50%. I actually don't know the number. But even in the gym, if you look around, how many people actually look like they are lifting? Not many, right? Maybe half of it. Now how many of these are actually good looking? You can probably list out 3 to 10 people, right? But that's out of the thousands and thousands members. And for that, you don't need to be the biggest guy in the gym. You just have to pack on a lot of muscles, everything that your genetics allow you, and you also have to be lean. And ta-da, you made it to the top 10% physiques. And the first is the training. To pack on 10 to 20 kilograms of muscle, it is going to take you years. And you are not going to look like a newbie forever, you are going to gradually change over the years. If you have the best training approach, principles, training plan, nutrition, you are going to get there easily in 2-4 to four years. And if you don't have any of these, after the newbie phase, you are going to be stuck in the gym limbo forever. And there are so many people who don't gain a gram of muscle after their newbie gains because they are not willing to change their approach. Because they say that that worked in the beginning. Yeah, of course everything works in the beginning, but it's not working now. Not to mention that everything even has degrees. Some things are working way better, while others are just working. If we have two guys, both of them want bigger biceps, and one of them is going to start its pool day with back exercises and then a circuit biceps training, then he's not going to have a good looking arm. Opposed to someone who is going in on his pool day, he's going to start with either a preacher curl or a seated biceps curl followed by a hammer curl and then going to do his pool exercises. See where I'm going? You can't just go to the gym with a generic plan and expect to have the physique you want. Always aim to have good intensity with good form. If you only have a textbook perfect form without intensity like an RIR 5, you're not going to get anything. And if you have shitty form but really good intensity, you're actually going to get something but it is probably not what you want. But let me give you an example. If you are doing a bench press, but you never go lower than 90 degrees and you are also flaring your elbows, you are not keeping them in an angle close to your body, you are never giving a chance for your chest to work. And this is nothing else, just form and execution. And understand something about training. It is repetitive and boring. You are not going to be motivated and you also have to repeat the same training plan for 4 to 12 weeks. And I see people saying, oh, 12 weeks on... Yes, 12 weeks. Can you still progress on your exercises? 12 weeks. Is it boring doing the same thing? It is. Are you going to get to your dream physique if you just keep repeating it as long as you are progressing? Yes, you will. And the second is nutrition. Depending on your starting point, you either have to cut or mess. If you are a skinny teen but you still don't see your abs, that's more of a muscle problem rather than an actual leanness problem. So I don't think there is a reason for you to cut. Go into a surplus of 100-200 calories and maintain that. And once you are not satisfied with your body fat percentage, maybe once or twice per year you can do some mini cuts for like 8 weeks. You can even do it for 4-12 to 12 weeks, but I wouldn't suggest it. If you are chubby, you have to cut. And for that you have to figure out your maintenance calories and start from there. There are some really good formulas online where you can also use your iPhone and the health app and it shows you roughly how much you are burning if you filled up with your data. Whether you like it or not, if there is a 60 kilogram person but carries around 20 kilogram of muscle, that person is always going to look godlike. You can't just go on a forever bulk and expect you to have a top 10% physique because you never mastered the skills for cutting nor the willpower to do it. Have enough protein, and this is where people think that I'm saying eat chicken breast rice and broccoli. Eat your favorite food, make it just with more meat, less carbs and fat. It is that simple, it is more enjoyable 
sustainable and it is easier to adhere to. I never seen anybody succeeding on long term. I see some bodybuilders in chicken breast rice and broccoli prepare for a show and then fuck it up later and you know gain ridiculous amount of body fat. Just eat your regular food, what you are eating right now, because you like that. You just have to make it so it fits your goals. Less calories, more protein. Is it going to taste different? Yeah. Is it going to be bad? It probably won't be. Like 80%. And in the beginning, when you are cutting, it is going to be easy, and then it gets ridiculously hard. And this is where people give it up. But you just have to think about something. It is temporary. You are in a deficit. That's why you are hungry. You hate the world. You don't have a way to live. But once you go to your body fat percentage where you want to stay, let's say 10 to 15%, maintaining is so much more easier. You just have to get there. And it's hard. I'm not going to BS you at first. I thought that this is an obvious thing, but after coaching thousands of people, it seems like it is not. You need to sleep around seven hours per day. If you don't, then your workouts can suffer and your hunger can ramp the fuck up. You can still survive days like that, but manage your time better. I like playing, watching series, but you're not going to die if you are not staying up till 2 a.m. because you can't control yourself because you are addicted. Watch your series, but know that when it's time, just go to sleep. Oh yeah, you couldn't binge watch the whole series, it's fine. Or you couldn't play another seven games with your friends. I don't even have friends. So just go to bed on time. And guess what? You even have to do it on the weekend. It sucks. Track everything. People like to throw around the word obsession. If you are tracking your weight on a scale, because you want to see if you are dropping body fat on a weekly basis, then it's obsession. If you are tracking your food and your calories, because you want to see if you are in a calorie deficit, just to lose body fat, you are obsessed. But when people plan four weeks ahead what pub to pick on Saturday and what club to go to on Sunday just to get drunk, fuck up the whole weekend, fuck up their training, the nutrition, that's completely normal. That's not obsession. I don't listen to anybody who says these. I track my workouts because I want to improve. And that's probably going to be you. I'm tracking my calories. Actually, I'm not because I know what I'm eating. I'm eating the same food for seven years. But if you are tracking your calories because you want to lose body fat, that's not obsession. These are just numbers. Nothing else. It's data. Walk. Sacrifice your time for it. Whenever I go to the gym and walk back, there is a person in the street who gets in the car and goes to the shop. Now, the shop is three minutes from where she lives. And sometimes you can say, that, oh, she's probably doing a big shopping. No, the other day, she went for a soft drink in a car. It takes you three minutes to walk there. And then she drove back. Why are you being lazy? And this is a law of people, actually. Like, even if I talk to someone in the gym who is quite obese, and I'm asking them, like, how far you live? Ten minutes, I took the bus. Three stops. Why? If you are living somewhere where everything is in 15 to 20 minutes walk, then just walk there. At least you get your steps in. Aim for five to 10,000 steps per day. I'm not saying 10,000 is a magic number, but at least you can burn anything in between 250 to 500 calories on a daily basis. And I know when you get home from work, you like playing games or you like watching series, it is hard to go for a walk. But I always think about this. It is hard to go for a walk, but it is also hard to wake up every day, look into the mirror and hate myself and I just pick my heart. Do the same thing at the same time. So many people have decision fatigue. What are you trying to figure out? Have your favorite two to four meals every day. You don't need to think. You know the calorie content. You don't even have to write it down. Go to the gym at the same time. At least if you do that, you're not going to think like, oh shit, when can I go? I, I, I don't know because I missed my window. Just go at the same time. And even for your walks, go at the same time. After work, before work, before sleep, before eating or after breakfast, or whatever. It's just the same time. And once everything is dialed in, it becomes effortless. You go to the gym, you wake up, eat, work, and then you go for your walk, but you are eating the same food what you usually eat. You don't need to think. And there is no need to stretch this any longer. If you want to look like top 10%, 
you just have to pack on 10 to 20 kg of muscle and get lean and you are there and I went into the specifics in some of my videos I would start with this like subscribe hit the bell talk to you in the next one